Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my Halo Infinite review. I do have some notes written down but I'm actually going to approach this as a more live commentary. I just think it'll flow better. But before we get into the actual commentary, I would like to know your opinions in the comments down below. How you feel about Halo Infinite, what's good, what's bad, what's ugly, what needs to change. If you enjoyed this video, throw a like on it as it helps me a lot. And if you're feeling generous, go ahead and throw a sub my way as I grind away towards 10,000 subscribers. Alright, let's get into the review. We all know that first impressions are key in today's gaming world and there's been much fanfare surrounding Halo and its newest game. Now after the delay, there was a sense of doom in the air. How could 343 save the game? The graphics issues, you know, these are terrible. How bad was it really if they had to take an entire year to fix things? It was not looking good, but in a massive turn of events, 343 released Flighting earlier this year, and it was just widely appraised. People loved it. I personally went in with low expectations, and the flights blew me away with how much fun I was having. And I really felt like 343 had finally nailed this next iteration of modern Halo, it has the heart and soul of the old games. After that, 343 and Microsoft decided to give us a beta, quote unquote, of the game. Although I believe that they said all the content that would have been in the game on December 8th is there. And there's also microtransactions. And once you start offering that, your game is pretty much complete to me. But everybody was super hyped about it. Everybody went to go download it and the flood of content happened. So it's been over a week for me playing this game. I only have 30 hours in the game and that's because I've been really focusing on content on YouTube, but I feel like I can give an accurate representation of how I feel. That being said, with all the good things Infinite does, there's some huge missteps and issues that currently plague the game. But I would argue that they are relatively simple in terms of fixing them going forward, which is much better than having a core gaming loop that's just terrible. So I want to start off what I think is good in Infinite, and there's there's a lot. I think most of it can be encompassed in just the core gameplay, and the gameplay loop is fantastic to me. And to me, it's the best Halo we've had since Halo 3 by far. The maps are mostly well designed for play. I feel like they took a lot of time to kind of balance the maps out. There are some issues on some of them, but overall, I think that the maps are very well done. And the aesthetics of those maps are also some of my favorites. Like streets to me is just so cool. I think they're gorgeous to look at and it honestly has me super excited for the future maps that will be brought into the game. Another huge win for 343 in this game is the training and academy mode. I think it's amazing for new players. I love its inclusion in the game. I've had multiple people who have never played Halo before whether it be IRL friends or people, you know, that play other games that have come to me and said that they love the Academy. I, for one, love to hop in there and just fly around, you know, training mode with the grapple shot and trying to do sick things. One of the biggest concerns was how Halo Infinite would be able to catch new players while also pleasing old Halo veterans who, you know, have their own opinion on how Halo should play and be. And I think 343 nailed this compromise. It's probably as perfect as it could get in terms of it being a modern shooter with the old Halo game style. Weapon balance to me feels pretty good. There's a, a lot of weapons that have key niches that they fill and although I think uh, guns like the Plasma Pistol, Pulse Carbine, Ravager, and the AR could use some additional changes. But we're not going to get into that because I'm not trying to argue with everybody in the comments. And the new weapons that they introduced are some of my favorites as well. The Stalker Rifle has quickly become one of my favorite weapons in all of Halo. That being said, there's also a bunch of people uploading weapon variants. I don't know if we'll be able to use these in regular multiplayer or if they're from the campaign or what, but that's just going to add to the weapon sandbox. I also think that the new equipment choices that they brought are extremely pleasing to use, and the grapple shot is the most dynamic and fun equipment I think ever added into a Halo game. I absolutely love it. That being said, I really just think that the overall art style, gameplay, all those things that are the foundation of what makes a good game good are there for Halo Infinite. And now we come to what's bad, and there are some very key issues that I have with Halo Infinite as of right now. Microtransactions. I made a whole video on this topic. I'll link it in the description and in the comments, but to sum it up, it's not a good time. That coupled with the progression and unlocks and how the progression system is challenge based, it feels extremely unrewarding because you just keep, you know, playing games, playing games, and if you don't actually do any of the challenges, you're only getting 50 XP for completing the game. And it just 
keeps all the the cosmetics and stuff and the battle pass just you know locked away behind hours and hours and hours and hours of grind that doesn't really feel good these challenges are also tied to playing specific modes so like if you have to kill the enemy flag carrier then only do that and capture the flag but in quick play you you never know what you're going to actually get you can get five oddballs in a row and then you're you know, game session is over and you can't play anymore. So I do not like that. I know there are challenge swaps, but it's just, I don't like it. Anytime that a game forces you to play a certain way or to do certain things, I think it's bad for the ecosystem. Going back to the playlist, there's four of them, four. You have Bot Bootcamp, Quick Play, Big Team Battle, and Ranked. And Ranked is just competitive variations of Quick Play. And to me, that is unacceptable. We had an event where Fiesta arrived and it's... It's just an event exclusive playlist. And I think to lock a mode like that behind an event is extremely disheartening. Infection and Griff Ball are also missing along with SWAT and just a multitude of other game modes. And it's weird to me because Halo doesn't have a population issue right now. And to limit game modes to just, you know, the four playlists and not even including a regular Team Slayer or Free For All is just absolutely mind boggling to me. Halo needs these social and party game modes and it needs them fast, especially with how the custom games works and Forge delays. It, these games need to be brought to Halo Infinite right now. Another issue that I see a lot of people have, I don't personally have it, Audio is messed up for a lot of players right now. Sometimes you can't hear a Spartan next to you or tell how close that Spartan is when they're shooting at you. I think this also goes hand in hand with the radar not being extended far enough. And anecdotally, the amount of times that I've been just ran up by someone who's not crouching or in camo and attacked me before I even knew they were there is far more than any Halo game I've ever played. And I've gone through theater just to make sure that these people aren't crouched or invis. And I'm still getting surprised. I also think that the melee system is broken. It's either like you lunge forever away or it's just extremely inconsistent with its range. I think that that needs a look at. I, I actually actively avoid meleeing completely in this game because of how inconsistent it is. That being said, too often I've seen people just rely on melees in this game compared to older Halo titles, and having people just hold forward, you know, spraying their AR to melee me is not a great time. Something that is a staple of Halo that's uh, not really doing well right now is the theater mode. It's not great. In fact, um, it's pretty broken, honestly. I've seen people say that it doesn't even record, the timeline, the UI, the UX, the interface, all that stuff, it's just not working out. I've only used it a couple times and it's actually crashed my game like three times. So I think that that needs a, a look at custom games. They need to be helped. They need to be more fleshed out. There needs to be more options, more support. Optimization on PC is so close to being good. It's just not quite there. I shouldn't have to you know, jury rig a bunch of settings to get the game to run at a decent frame rate, but at least it runs better than Battlefield. Overall, I'm extremely happy with how the game came out. This was not a bad launch or anything like that. There are some glaring issues looking at you microtransactions and the progression system. 343 has had a line of communication open about, you know, listening to feedback and wanting to change certain things. So hopefully we can revisit this in like six months and the game will be completely different, but in a good way. That's gonna do it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you in the next